<laughs> I know joy is something that's contagious, right? Well, that's what this episode is all about. Because on this episode, I sit down with life coach Emmanuel Enemy to talk about how joy can get you through the tough times and so much more. So much more that part one of that interview will air on this episode. Same with the skit, God's Favorite Plumber, will be the name of the skit in this episode, which features Flobo Boys as Pastor Abdu, I do, I do. All this and more on He Said, She Heard. Stop listening to us from any quarter of the world. You know that you can watch us too. È possibile vedere anche il video di questo episodio collegandovi sul sito www.hesaidsheheard.com. If you want to watch this episode, you can head over to our website www.hesaidsheheard.com. She heard a silly noise. I know what's going on. He said that's not what happened. Girl, you got it wrong. She heard about what's going on. Oh, yeah. He said she heard about what's going on. But what's going on? He talks, sir. Rising Star presents I Met Jesus. The pre NFT collection features the world's most expensive photograph called Church Grounds, along with billion dollar digital images of incredible spiritual quality and significance. Rising Star, the innovative house based in New York City, presents the timeless art collection entitled I Met Jesus, which includes several limited sub collections. The main director of Rising Star is James Dennis, and he carefully curated this timeless collection. A Rising Star spokesperson said, The work is the result of years of curation and divine alignment. It's an honor to help revive the church in a way that is unique from the norm. You can learn more about the world's most expensive photograph by going to Mena FM and searching for I Met Jesus. And stay tuned for the collection called Jesus Showed Me a Split C. Secure this digital asset today. Are you searching for life lessons from the real world as opposed to the classroom, but you also want to be entertained at the same time? Then you need to read this book, Graduation Day, Life Lessons from the Real World by Flobo Boyce. And tell us about your book called Graduation Day. Everyone always tells you, hey, if you could tell a younger person something, what would you say? I say nothing at all because I think this journey was great. But what would I tell somebody else is what this book's about. Flobo's memoir, Graduation Day, is funny yet touching, as his real but unbelievable experiences have influenced the way he looks at life. And it'll give you a new outlook, too. Buy yours today on Amazon Kindle or paperback by clicking on the link in this episode's show description. Buy Graduation Day, Life Lessons from the Real World by Flobo Boyce, today on Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Woo! Yeah, at the end, it wraps up into, like, my actual commitments. So, Graduation Day is named the book. It's available on Amazon. Thank you for joining us for this episode of He Said, She Heard, which may end up being your favorite. So don't forget to click the share and subscribe buttons and also to keep this international comedy and music show going and growing. There's a Become a Patron button. When you click the Become a Patron button, you'll see there's perks for supporting the show that's brought to you from three different countries. Listen, share, support. Back to the show now. Welcome to He Said, She Heard. I'm your host, Mike Fox. We got a funny skit coming up for you later called God's Favorite Plumber, Part 1. <laughs> but before we get into that, I have a guest with me today. He is a life coach, and he is spreading inspiration in every direction possible and motivation so many things that we'll get into during this talk. We don't know what's going to be said, but <laughs> what we hope for is that it will inspire you. Let me introduce my guest for today, Emmanuel Enemy. Did I pronounce your name right? Correct, sir. Okay, I said your name correctly. Emmanuel Enemy. Correct, correct. Awesome. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, because I know it's somebody's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> greetings, greetings, sir. Thank I'm you. happy to be here. Um, I, I couldn't hold it back. I had to let out a song. Well, that was a nice little impromptu song. And, and like you said, you know it's somebody's birthday somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you made right, somebody's right. day somewhere, and that's, uh, that's wonderful. Good. I hope I did. So, um, yeah, I'm a character coach and God called me out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana to move to Zagreb, Croatia. Oh, and the journey from the call to the preparation to the move and the character development that occurred in the process all the way up to the point where I finally discovered my God-given purpose. My God-given purpose is to help you look more attractive. Not the person on the outside though, the person on the inside, the real you, your character. And the journey, uh, the adventure to get to that, to that statement, to that, if you will, soundbite, uh, it had me doing things like singing in public. And <laughs> it still has me singing in public. <clears throat> but something that we mentioned at the beginning of the show uh, or excuse me, in the conversation prior was perspective. Perspective. You noticed that when you brought on uh, different guests mm -hmm. from diverse backgrounds, yes, it helped add some perspective it sure uh, did. To, to your show, to your conversations. Yeah. And as far as character goes and character development goes that is absolutely vital that was <clears throat> that was absolutely vital for me in in order to get to that sound bite was i needed to talk to many different people from many different walks of life uh, some people English is their first language. Some people, English is not their first language, being that I'm here in Zagreb. And I mean, I've communicated to, to kids as young as five years old, to um, older adults, um, and from homeless to poor. And basically, all of these perspectives helped me in my journey in my discovering my God-given purpose. And when I say inner attractiveness, um, essentially to sum that up is, are you somebody that people like to be around or enjoy being around during the difficult times? Yeah. Yeah. And to get to that point, or I'll say this, everybody can get to that place where people enjoy being around them during the difficult times. It's like, because that person has that eternal joy. And two good examples. And I talk about them. Uh, on other podcasts, and I'll talk about them until I'm blue in the face. Two women, one, Amy Carmichael. She traveled from uh, somewhere in the UK to India, and this was sometime in the 1800s. And the, <clears throat> the other young lady is Miss Gladys Elwood. She traveled from the UK I believe London uh, 
to China wow. in the early 1900s. So we got two women went on a mission, no cell phone, no email. Um, at wow. that point, I guess was the cell. I'm um, excuse me. Was the was the um, landline phone? I don't even think that was. Uh, I think that created. came in the 1920s, if I'm not mistaken. If, yeah, the landline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, but so they were communicating back to their family members by uh, by writing letters. Letters. Yeah, wow. and. That's another one of those things that I discovered is that writing letters is a good thing. And sure is. one of the reasons, and it's actually very practical, is I don't want to have to start writing this again. So I'm going to pause and think about what it is that I want to say. Hmm. And so maybe you're a person who's like, ah, I don't care, line through it. <laughs> they're gonna get uh, <laughs> they're gonna get a letter with lines through it. Um, mm. but it it's helped me to pause and think, well, right. what do I wanna say? Right. And another uh, tip or tool that helped me in regards to writing is I begin with the end in mind. So I write the sentence that I expect to be my last sentence. Okay. So I've literally written my goal on paper. And so now when I start writing, I'm like trying to get to that last sentence to make sure this, uh, the statement uh, makes logical sense yeah. to get to that, uh, to that last line. And it doesn't always turn out that that last line that I started out with in my mind is always the last line. Okay. Um, yeah. but, but it, it has helped me become more effective in some of my writing, even in, <laughs> I laugh, uh, even in writing poems. Um, yeah, I wrote a poem recently about uh, putting away the dishes and it's titled Click Clack Ting Ting. <laughs> oh, I like that. Click Clack Ting Ting. <laughs> yeah. And so, but speaking of, those two young ladies are uh, Miss Amy Carmichael and Miss Gladys Elwood. Yeah. It's possible for people to get to that point where people enjoy being around you during the difficult times. You bring a warmth. Yes. Yeah. That makes total sense. <laughs> that makes yeah, total and, sense. I, I have to and, admit, it's like right? I. I enjoy being that type of person myself. I enjoy being the type of person where I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm laughing and people think that this guy has to be on something and I'm not, and I'm not, you know, no substances, no booze, nothing just to be naturally happy. And for people to want to be around me is it's a wonderful feeling that, I'm glad we both share that in common with each other because it's it's uh, it's so many things I can't even find the right word like you said. <laughs> I have to think before I write that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> well, just to add one piece of, uh, about the writing, this will help people to, in a sense, recondition they're speaking mm -hmm. because oftentimes people are thought boom out the mouth and so like maybe that first thought that comes into their mind that they they start talking right away yeah and that can get some people into trouble 
Yes, it's, no filter. It's gotten me into trouble uh, in the past. And right. so I, I see and I experience the benefits of, hey, slow down, pump the brakes, think about uh, the response that you uh, want to give and or if you should give a response at all. And because sometimes <clears throat> just due to time's sake, it's not wise to uh, discuss certain things. And so depending, like if I'm in the main square here in Zagreb and I'm preaching to people and maybe they ask me a question, I was like, uh, that's a bit complicated uh, to answer in this short time frame. That would take some uh, yeah. some writing some in writing. order to uh, to help communicate it to uh, to you in in a f the most effective way uh, that could be achieved through writing um so there was something else you you, you said it oh yeah um basically having that that overwhelming happiness to the yeah. point where people are like <laughs> well, it's contagious like, yeah yeah and <laughs> and the negativity is contagious as well and so it, this is it why sure it's important it's sure yeah is. and i still remember <laughs> one time i was walking down the street here in zagreb and mm -hmm. so i'm just strolling as i normally do with a <laughs> smile on my face yeah. and i'm like <laughs> sometimes it's it almost feels like the smile is coming from deep down within. Mm -hmm. And so if I tried to stop smiling, I couldn't because it's coming from, from somewhere else. Yes. And I remember I'm walking down the street and I walked past this group of guys. I believe they were from the States. Uh -huh. And what one of them uh, said as he was walking past me, like, <laughs> I want some of what he got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, I mean, but also something that I, <clears throat> I've observed is that it appears, it appears. and this is, uh, this is me being uh, prejudgy here. Uh, I'll admit that uh, fault, but sometimes it appears that people are like, this person is straight up crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, Been there. and so, and so forgive me for prejudging, uh, but that is something to, to think about as well for yeah. a person. It's like, um, sometimes you'll hit that level of joy to the point where people might think this person is crazy. Who yeah. could, who could be this, uh, this, uh, happy and yeah. why is the smile mm -hmm. wrapping around the back of their head? Yeah. This is <laughs> <laughs> but it's possible, yeah. but more importantly is to know that you can have this, in the difficult times. Absolutely. And, and part of the reason why it's important to have it during the difficult times is I've noticed this with myself. That's when I am at greatest risk of developing anger or bitterness yeah. or hopelessness. Um, That's yeah. the worst feeling, hopelessness. <laughs> It's the worst, the opposite it, of what you just described a few seconds ago. <laughs> right. You feel like I'm just not going to make it. Yeah. And, and so joy being an antidote mm -hmm. uh, to that, because what comes along with joy is victory over so many other things. So yes. victory over hopelessness, mm. um, victory over poor uh, scheduling, 
yeah. victory over poor planning. Everything. Uh, because that stuff plays into a person's mindset. Yeah. Um, like planning and scheduling. And, yeah. Because I've noticed that people have this stress about them uh, when they don't have their days organized. Yeah. And I'm hopeful because it's planning and scheduling is something that, well, everybody can do. Yeah. And a bit and a very important thing that will help someone improve in that is once they discover <clears throat> their purpose here on this planet, because now they know their purpose. And so they're planning and scheduling things to help them achieve it. And so that increases one's ability to uh, improve their, their scheduling and become much more efficient uh, and effective uh, in their daily walk to the point where they can stroll down the street singing a song. <laughs> Baby shark, do 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 do. do <laughs> My daughter loves that song. <laughs> I tell you, it's let's see, that one gets uh, the kids going. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> another one, another one. And one that I like myself is the wheels on the bus go round and round. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something about it. Um, Those songs help kids with language development because they're such happy songs, upbeat, right? Right. And I would say that, well, I was speaking with somebody uh, the other day and he said that some of his Croatian friends who moved to other countries, like they initially might have been struggling uh, yeah. with uh, learning the language of yeah. the new country. And this gentleman said that basically those friends reported to him and that it's like, once I got over that worry about what other people uh, thought about me in regards to making mistakes, once I got over that, then it became easier to learn a language. Okay. And so <clears throat> and so back to your point in regards to helping kids learn a language. Mm -hmm. It's make it fun. Make it fun. And <laughs> yeah, less structure like okay, now we're going to do this, now we're going to do that. Let's have fun. Yeah, yeah, the kids have are like yeah, I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have fun and um, fear and worry. Mm -hmm. uh, can affect, or let me not say can, it will yeah. affect a person's performance. Absolutely. And it comes down to this logical point. It's your mind can only run on so many thoughts. It's true. And so if, <clears throat> if you have these overwhelming thoughts of fear and worry, that's going to dominate the mind. And yeah. in a sense, it's suppressing all of the thoughts that you need in that moment to be effective. Yeah. And yeah. And so this is, <clears throat> well, there are dollar costs to not getting victory over uh, these mental health uh, issues. Yeah. There are actual dollar costs because imagine you going to work or a woman goes into work after uh, having a fight with uh, her husband yeah. or maybe they're, they can't get their teenager under control. Yeah. And that stress on the mind mm. going to work first four hours, almost certainly 
that individual is not going to be able to perfectly fo focus on their task. No. And so those are actual dollar productivity losses. And additionally, almost most certainly, you're going to make an error because yes, boom, your, <clears throat> your mental energy got stolen by yeah. worry, fear, anger, frustration. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, there's this, a study that says, I forgot how much it is, but the US companies um, lose billions of dollars a year uh, due to workplace distractions. Yeah. And the main reason for that is, as I've been discussing is, um, people have <clears throat> become overwhelmed with uh, the mental health issues like fear, fear, or pride, or doubt, or worry, yeah. hopelessness, um, bad scheduling, bad planning. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I do call these things mental health uh, diseases is because as we met, may mention before, these things are contagious, but there's a cure for all of them. If a person, and I'll speak for myself, in striving to get the cure over worries, over doubt, over poor planning, over mm -hmm. not getting down to my why, as I've been striving in this, this process, it's like <clears throat> my effectiveness uh, just keeps getting better and better and better. And something concrete, for example, is <clears throat> small talk with strangers. Yeah, that's <laughs> I remember when I and this is part of the, the journey since I moved here. I remember some of my earlier conversations. And I just maybe I would make it uh, past hello. Um, hmm. <laughs> um, but just noticing like, okay, yeah, these things like, like thoughts in my mind. Um, for example, oh, no, I said that word wrong. Or oh, no, I stumbled over that. Right. And, th and then and then that worry that this person might be might be thinking uh, something unideal about me that <clears throat> is lowering my social status in their mind that that worry started to uh, basically plague my mind and it affected my ability to uh, to speak to the point where it's like i started stumbling more right and so <clears throat> maybe yeah. the best way to say it is now i just blow past a stumble and it's like all right fair enough Keep going. There you like go. If I say something that's like I stumbled, it's like, ah, eh, fair enough. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not going to let myself get overwhelmed by that. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, next time, I'll get better. Next time, I'll get better. And so each conversation I go into, I get that opportunity uh, to improve. Um, maybe there's a statement that I have to repeat in a conversation because <clears throat> I'm trying to perfect that statement. Um, yeah. Like for example, <laughs> um, one statement that I recently had to uh, perfect was, so I would ask people as I'm in the square, I'd say, are you happy? And at the end of their response, I wanted to eventually have them, or at least me say, then clap your hands. They clap your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so what, <laughs> hmm. and this is, uh, this is an interesting part of um, my character training is that sometimes I do need to just boom let a thought turn to words and come out so basically 
instead of thinking too much because that could be a uh, that can be an issue as well because that yeah. thinking too much could be oh i need to say this perfectly from yeah. the get go and yeah. so that can uh, that can limit a person as well that makes sense and, yeah and i've noticed this um especially when i'm walking down the street mm-hmm. and if god tells me speak to that person then i'm like oh let me find a way to creatively enter into the conversation yeah Yeah. and boom by the time i maybe get something to start off with we're here they're gone and so (laughs) yeah well you do yeah yeah and at that point then i'm almost like then i'm also like that it's like i'm I'm tired yeah (laughs) yeah yeah exactly and so (laughs) and so that's also one thing that i discovered that and it comes down to having a balance yeah of balance sometimes you need to be slow to uh to speak yes but in a situation like what I described walking down the street, sometimes you need to not worry, was that first statement a perfect statement? Because that worry will keep you from acting. Yeah. And and sometimes, and I'll say this, in my experience, it's that taking that leap of faith that put that pushing outside of one's comfort zone that then spawns the creativity. And so going back to taking that leap there, going back to um, what I was saying in regards to trying to get to the point where I would say, then clap your hands. So I would say, are you happy? And then to try and get to that point to get them to clap their hands, I, I had messed up a couple of times or messed up. Um, I first needed to find out exactly what I could say to get to that point. And then eventually I came to something that mm. I think is relatively clean. I'd ask people, are they happy? And people would respond back. Yeah, I'm happy. And I'm like, did you know there's one way for a person? And I make my face very serious. And I'm like, there's one way for you to really know that you're happy. And then people would typically respond back okay what is that clap your and then i would say clap your hands <laughs> <laughs> as the song says that's as what the, it says as, as the <laughs> as the proverb says clap your hands clap your hands that's wonderful emmanuel well go nowhere folks we're going to take a break right now but when we come back we're going to play that skit for you called god's favorite plumber and our conversation that I'm having here with Emmanuel Enemy is going to continue in the next episode of He Said, She Heard. Emmanuel Enemy Part 2 plus God's <laughs> Favorite Plumber Part 2, but God's Favorite Plumber Part 1 is coming up after this break. Don't go nowhere. Are you searching for life lessons from the real world as opposed to the classroom, but you also want to be entertained at the same time? Then you need to read this book, Graduation Day, Life Lessons from the Real World by Flobo Boyce. And tell us about your book called Graduation Day. Everyone always tells you, hey, if you could tell a younger person something, what would you say? I say nothing at all because I think this journey was great. But what would I tell somebody else is what this book's about. Flobo's memoir, Graduation Day, is funny yet touching, as his real but unbelievable experiences have influenced the way he looks at life, and it'll give you a new outlook too. Buy yours today on Amazon Kindle or paperback by clicking on the link in this episode's show description. Buy Graduation Day, Life Lessons from the Real World by Flobo Boyce, today on Amazon. Yes, on Amazon, woo! Yeah, at the end, it wraps up into like my actual commencement speech. So, Graduation Day is named the book available on Amazon. He said, she heard. These guys are a riot. And the Zeppelins are still sitting in my stomach. Mm. I love the quirky comedy. Uh, what? We're like squatters. The music. In California, there's many downloads. And now I can wear the show. Wow. 
That's right, I just bought some He Said, She Heard merchandise. I got a t-shirt, so beautiful, a mask, who's that? A tank top, she's smoking hot. Thank you, because on Tee Public there's a sale going on. Did you see that? Head over to www.hesaidsheheard.com and click on Shop Now. Vamanos. Nom, 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 nom. Honey, nom, nom. let's go. That's www.hesaidsheheard.com and click on Shop Now. On a quiet Sunday morning, worshipers get their praise on at the Praise Be With You Church. Pastor Abdu, I do, I do, begins his sermon. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. I don't hear you. Amen. That's more like it. Praise the Lord. A reading from Exodus 14, 21. <laughs> I know my organ player is tempted to play some Bob Marley. Uh, sure, Pastor, I do, I do. But quite honestly, I don't know how to play Bob Marley. But you know where we're going, right? I hope so. Don't hope so. Pray so. There's a Bob Marley song called Exodus, and that's a line from that song. We know where we're going, so let's get to that passage. Exodus 14, 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were... It's happening again. Is Moses on the way? No, I don't think so. We got a problem with the church's plumbing. There's only one man for the job, but dang it, it's Sunday. I got the plumber's number. I'll call anyway. Flex Spoonball Plumbing. There is an answer. Praise God. You're open on Sunday? We're in church now. Praise God. I'm my husband's secretary on the weekends. Praise the Lord. We just finished St. Beatrice's ladies' room sink. Do you need Victor to come by? Oh, please. My socks are all wet. We're on our way. Come on, church. Praise the Lord, and God bless Victor the plumber. Can I get an amen? Amen. Did somebody call Victor Black Spoon Bowl? Now, Victor, thank you for showing up so unrealistically quickly. Please, the source of this water is in the back. Please work your miracles of blessed plumbing. There's no job too big for Victor. And this is your wife, Vicky? Yes, and my husband is the best plumber in town. All places of worship are having plumbing issues this weekend. It all started yesterday at the synagogue on the other end of town. Well, by me, I guess Victor is God's favorite plumber. Easy fix, too. I just sealed the leak with my own brand of Victor's foam. Now I'll get Victor's Super sucker machine to dry out all this water. And I've got replacement socks in my truck for the stinky wet feet everywhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think it's time for a song. Victor, will you join us? Sure, just let me throw out these socks. I mean, pass them out while you queue up the choir. It's better to pass them out, that way I don't look like Donald Trump. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hi, Vicky. Oh, you must be Detective Dick Dixon, Jr. I love it how we're in a house of worship and you're being all proper and changing my last name from Titson to Ditson. That's cute. I didn't know you go here. We have problems at home, but this place always lifts my spirits. And you know what? So do you. Come again? Hold on. 
Are you getting back at God's favorite plumber for the time you thought your wife was getting with me? Now, now hold on just a second. What is going on? Find out in part two of God's favorite plumber next time on He Said, She Heard. But on the next He Said, She Heard. Where's your wife, by the way? I'm right here, Reverend. Now, Lydia, I think your husband can't let go of the past. We have a history with God's favorite plumber, Mr. Black Spoon Bowl. Well... Well, there you go, Lydia. That sounds like a Timothy 5 8 right there already. Dick. Why can't you let go of your childhood past? He's right. You need to let it go, Dick. Now, who are these people? That's my father, and that's my uncle. What was the inspiration for the name of your show well it's, it's he said she heard right? yes i could be saying something but she could be hearing something different so, so good I, communication communication exactly uh, key. absolutely key because things can blow up we heard the silly noise but he or she was wrong he or she explains themselves we know what was going on he said she heard what was going on He said she heard what was going on What was going on This was He Said She Heard God's Favorite Plumber Flobo Boyce Kaylee Allen Music by Matthias Signoroldi with Ariana Corona and Romina Barbara. Sound effects provided by Zapsplat.com and Fesslian Studios. Follow Emmanuel Anime on Instagram at Emmanuel Anime. Follow He Said She Heard at He Said She Heard on Instagram. You can listen to more music by Matthias Signoroli at en.matitia. R-T-I-S-T dot com. You can buy Flobo Boyce's book, Graduation Day, on Amazon. Please rate and review this episode. And don't forget to subscribe to He Said, She Heard via your preferred podcast app.